my dudes, how you doing? I hope you're having a goddamn great day. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be breaking down and replicating Ruben Barajas. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Anyways, we will be replicating and recreating Valencia's 442 system that has, you know, found them some really nice, really good success so far this season. They currently sit eighth in the table. I'm pretty sure last season they were fighting off relegation. So it's a massive improvement. It's a massive step forward. They've lost some players due to injury. They've lost some players due to transfers and all that good stuff. But they've carried on going. They've found ways. They've found a will to get forward, attack. This man right here, Hugo Duro, has been in, in some crazy, sensational form this season. And his goals have helped propel this young team forward. So we will be looking at how you can successfully replicate this side, this team, this set of tactics into your game FC24. As for always, if you guys don't mind, hit the like button, comment down below the rating of the system, as well as potentially a comment if you like the system or not, um, and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Anyways, let's hop on straight into the goddamn video. So, taking a look at the formation, now I will say this, I have gone with a 442 holding, but every now and then, depending on the opposition, of course, this team can be very pragmatic and adjust on the fly to what the opposition has to throw at them. If they are looking to try and overwhelm them, attack quite a bit, you know, all over the place and try and overload in certain areas the manager will you know allow the two dms to adventure forward and more so take up the more natural central midfielder position so every now and then if you want if you want to try and overload the opposition push those players high up the field and um let the attack you know commence but otherwise i've made no major changes to the the natural system as things stand therefore it will be one goalkeeper two center backs two fullbacks two dms two wider midfielders and then of course two strikers now, taking a look at the tactics, the tactical vision that I've selected is kick and rush. We do tend to see a lot of the Valencia attacks you know, more or less be counter attacks or looking to go along, get those players in behind. Duro on the break. Of course, you've got Lopez on the right or on the left hand side, depending on which side he plays on. You've got um, Canus as well. Also being able to bomb forward, break in behind, penetrate the opposition's backline with their great runs in behind. Um, but yes, you, you are looking to more times now trying to, you know, bypass the midfield, bypass the opposition's midfield at times. Um, but of course, you do have some very talented midfielders in Papuelu, um, Guerra, I think that's how you pronounce his name as well. Very good on the ball, can drive at the opposition, create overloads, very strong runners with the ball in their possession. So you can also obviously use them when need be, but more so the plan B or more so the plan A in certain moments is to go long and get those runners in behind and trying to exploit the opposition. As for the defense and the defensive style, I have selected drop back. They do tend to press every now and then, yes, but more so I have noticed this season with the games that I have watched and the research I have done, they do tend to try and focus on their shape, making sure that they are defensively compact, structurally sound, not really looking to overly press the opposition unless the manager requires that, but more so drop back allows them to get into their defensive shape and try and plug the holes and the gaps in between the lines and more or less try and break up the opposition's builder play from back to front. As for the team width, like I said, a nice compact structure. I've gone with it set to 25, looking to, again, compact more century, force the opposition into those wider channels if required, and um, make sure that nothing can be channeled through the central areas of the field. The depth is set to a mid block, set to 40. Of course, it is more or less the lower end of a mid block, but still, nonetheless, it is going to be considered a mid block. Um, and this obviously does help. It still allows you to have a somewhat decent line in terms of, you know, progressing the ball high up the field, allowing them to sometimes support the attack. Um, and then also, you know, prevents those counter attacking opportunities that it minimizes the space in behind your back line. So I think it can, you know, offer a suitable amount of protection for the defenders as well as the goalkeeper. As well as in possession, it can also offer a decent amount of support. Onto the offense, the builder player I've selected is long ball as well as direct passing again. This often tends to go hand in hand with the tactical vision. Looking to go long more times, not looking to get those runners in behind, penetrating the opposition's back line. And of course, you do have some really pacey players in that front line. And um, the players that tend to, you know, loop those long balls over the top, they are also very good at, at it. I think it's I think it's pronounced Gulimon, um, Papuelu, of course, the two center backs as well. All very good at, you know, having that ability to find that pass in behind, hit the runners in transition very effectively. And then again, also exploits the opposition. As for the width, it is set to a very balanced 50. They don't overly look to try and stretch the opposition as much as possible. They can look to work the ball in the more central areas as well as out wide. So it's a very balanced approach and therefore I think 50 best suits that. Onto the players in the box now. 
I've set it to six, allowing for, you know, at least three players to be in and around there. If they are, you know, chasing a game or looking to try and, you know, score a goal or trying to overload in the box, you can definitely push this up to around, you know, an eight or maybe even a nine, depending on how dire the situation is. Um, but they do tend to have at least three players in and around the attacking areas at all times throughout the course of games. Now, that could be obviously your two strikers up front with the addition of one of the wingers or maybe even the likes of Guerra when he is subbed and he does tend to, you know, break into that attacking area very effectively. As for the corners and the free kicks, as for always, it is set to four. So, moving on to the tactics, of course, starting off at the back with Mama Dashvili, a fantastic goalkeeper, one of my favorite goalkeepers to sign in FC24. He's so tall, he's so long, he's so good at making saves, it's unbelievable. And in terms of his, you know, his outlets and what you expect of him, comfort crosses, of course, using his length to your team's advantage, looking to try and claim those aerial balls when they are, you know, fed into the box, whipped into the attacking area for the opposition. And then in terms of the, the saving outside of the box, he can do it, but not very effectively. And of course, you aren't playing the highest of lines. You're playing a, a, what is considered a, a deep mid block. So there's not that much space for him to really patrol, you know, out of his box. And uh, more so your defenders in front of him should be able to deal with those balls in behind. And if not, you know, they might be overhit and therefore he's already in his box and staying on his line. So a bit more of a traditional base goalkeeping approach for uh, the big man between the sticks. As for your two central defenders, of course, Dikabi as well as Mosquera, um, I haven't really made any changes to them. I don't think it's required. Um, so therefore, I would suggest you just leave them on their base set of instructions. As for the likes of Gaia, now, Gaia and Correa, or the, the other right back, I don't know how to pronounce his name, the French dude, they are both, or all of them will be set to the same set of instructions. They do attack, yes, they do, you know, get forward, but not all the time. They look to more or less try and make sure that the de on the defensive side of things, they're more compact and not being exposed so i've set it to balance and this also allows for you know one to get forward the other one to kind of stay back of course correa is more attacking of the two fullbacks so he will more naturally look to advance forward into the attacking areas but both will be set to balanced the, the run type is set to overlap often overlapping the the left and the right midfielders on either flank looking to try and create a, a little bit of space and you know width to the side down either flank um, and they do it very effectively as well in terms of the defensive positioning, I've set it to stick to position. Again, it goes back to the whole drop back type system, making sure that they're not exposed. And I often find that if you have it set to step up, which you normally tend to do this with a more, you know, pressing system, counter pressing system, Gagan pressing type system. When you have that and you have your fullback set to, to um, step up, they do tend to get nice high and wide and close to the opposition, you know, uh, wingers or wide players. And um, that can leave a whole host of, of space in behind. And, We've seen this season with Valencia, they're very good at, you know, making sure that they're, they're closing out those gaps. They're, you know, reducing the space that the opposition can try and exploit. So I often think it's counterproductive, especially in a counterattacking, you know, kick and rush type system like this, where you are trying to minimize that space. Anyways, I'm waffling a little bit, but nonetheless, that is the instructions for either the left or the right back. As you'll see here for Correa, he's got the same set of instructions as well. Onto the double pivots. Now, this could be Papuelu and Guliman, or Guliman, I, sorry, I'm butchering his name. Or it could be uh, Guerrera. Th th this kid right here, this kid right here is absolutely insane. I, I want this team to go and get this kid because he is absolutely sensational. But um, Guerrera, he's also really good. Um, so it can be either or. Now, there, there are a few tweaks that we will discuss when, you, when it comes to, you know, rotations and whatnot. But for the role of Papuelu, He's set to tight mark, off, obviously looking to try and pick up the bodies in and around your box, making sure that they don't have the space or the time to create or pop off shots, you know, in and around the danger area. The attacking support is set to stay back while attacking. Now, I do know that he does get forward every now and then, but more so, he tends to be the deepest midfielder out of the, the double pivot. Every now and then, the likes of Guliman or Guerra do get forward, um, and Popelu is more or less the guy that patrols at the back, looking to try and sweep up in front of that back line. The interceptions is set to normal with the positioning freedom being set to being the deep line playmaker now obviously you're not really looking to play that possession based brand of football but getting the the midfield very much involved in the game allowing them to get on the ball nice and early maybe they can you know spring those passes in behind look to try and release the front line at times um, and more so Popuelu has the skill set to to do this very effectively so therefore you want him being able to show for the ball um, as much as possible and get on it and trying to dictate the pace of play as for the defensive positionings, it's set to cover the wing. Now, I was when I was trying this out, cover the center does a very effective job. But if you're looking for a more realistic approach, we do tend to see the, the DMs, they sit back 
they sit deep at times and if the opposition are overloading they do tend to drift into those wider channels trying to prevent crosses pick up the extra runners and make sure that you know they're stifling as much out wide as possible so cover the wing is realistic but i would say cover the center you know protects your back line a bit more but anyways if you're looking for the more realistic approach which is what we're doing on this channel i think cover the wing as for the likes of your other dm of course really more <laughs> i don't know how to pronounce his name but he is set to cut passing lanes a bit more of a zonal approach for him and he can also look to you know be a, a, a adequate tight marker when it comes to you know being in and around the box but more so you want him trying to sweep up just in front of Kupelu. and if anything gets you know behind him you've got your secondary dm to try and you know pick up the the extra man or, or whatnot the attacking support is set to balance now this is more so to try and suit what guerrero can do and we have seen that um this man right here also can venture forward every now and then the interceptions is set to normal just like with Pukwelu. And then, of course, stick to position and cover the wing. Onto your two wider midfielders. Both are set to the exact same identical instructions. Both are told to come back on defense. I, I must say, I'm so impressed with the work rate that this team has and possesses. Such a young team and the manager being able to more or less force them into having that defensive awareness, forcing his attackers to drop deep, support the defense. And that's why they have one of the best defensive records in La Liga currently. Um, and a large part goes down to the fact that Lopez and Perez and um, Canus and so on, they're always helping back. They're always looking to try and support the fullback. So therefore, comeback on defense is going to be absolutely quintessential to the success of your team going forward. The transcreation is set to a balance with. Now, we do see the, the wider midfielders drift inside and outside, especially if they do have an overlapping fullback. So you want to try and, you know, play into that dynamic approach where every now and then they can look to into the more central areas of the field and maybe try and create for the the two strikers of course getting in behind is also very essential to the success of the side especially if you are looking to loop in those long balls over the top in behind the opposition's back line looking to try and exploit them and of course Perez and Lopez and like I say the other wider midfielders that have the capabilities of playing in these wider positions they're all very pacey they all are very good on the ball driving at, a, at the opposition's back line so again you want to try and get them in behind as much as possible as for the interceptions, I've set it to normal with the ability for the support on crosses to be set to balance. Now, we do see them every now and then breaking into the box. Um, but at the same time, if you are, you know, looking to maybe overwhelm the opposition, you want your, your wingers or your wider midfielders to try and support the ball to play in those wide channels as much as possible. And if they're consistently getting into the box, it kind of breaks the, the ball to play, you could say, in and around your opponent's, you know, defensive area. As for the likes of Perez, as you'll see right here, he's got the same roles and instructions as well. So into your front line, we've got Juro and Yuramchuk. They have slightly differing roles, but both of them are set to stay central. I, I have noticed, and I was a bit surprised because I would have expected Juro, who can also play out, out, out wide on the, the left-hand side. He's very pacey. I think he's he's got the build of a winger that plays as a striker, um, but he's also very physical. Oddly, very good at you know being able to pop up in the right areas, reading the game very effectively, and obviously tucking away the goals but they mainly attack in the central areas of the field looking for those crosses and those cutbacks in the center spots and both of them more or less try and attack the same area but because of that overload it, it works in Valencia's favor more times than not so both will be set to stay central the difference is here Yuram Chuck is set to target man you want him to use his big towering physicality to your team's advantage with the knockdown balls the link up play everything that you would want and expect from a tall physical I think he's like 6'2 or 6'3 striker and to be honest, he's doing a fantastic job currently in La Liga. The interceptions is set to normal with the defensive support being set to come back on defense, often looking to try and help support the defensive outlets by tucking in and providing an extra barrier, an extra layer, an extra body in between the lines, looking to try and either intercept the ball or just try and stifle the opposition's back line, build up play, or even the midfield offense. As for the likes of Duro, very similar role with a, a slight tweak to it. The attacking runs is set to mixed, allowing him to often use his pace to break in behind. We have seen that countless times this season, but at the same time, you still want him to, to be able to be a target man. Like I said, I was oddly surprised with the amount of physicality and the, the know-how and the, the, the just the genius of this man right here, because he's not the tallest of players. He's not like six foot plus, but he's very pacey. He knows how to use his body to Valencia's advantage. He gets him behind when required. He attacks the central areas. He can be very physical when needed. Um, and I think a mixed uh, or mixed attack or run run attacking run set to mixed it helps get the best out of Duro and what the side may need and require. 
The interceptions is set to normal, and of course, just like with Urim Chuck, it is set to come back on defense for the defensive support. Again, looking to add an extra layer, an extra body in between the lanes, trying to break up the builder play from back to front. So guys, if you do make rotations to the side and Almeida as well as Guerra do come in, um, they do offer a slightly different element to the team and what it has to offer. So for Almeida, of course, more, more so seen as a central midfielder slash attacking midfielder in the number 10 role. When Valencia were playing the 4-2-3-1 system, he was very instrumental in either playing as one of the deeper midfielders or potentially just in behind the striker. So in order to replicate his role very nicely, and it kind of does create that 4-2-3-1 shape, you want him to be able to have a balance with allowing him to drift in and out of the central channels but most importantly playing as a false nine having him drop a bit deeper having him you know link up play very nicely with the the two dms or the double pivots the interceptions will be set to normal as well as the ability for him to come back on defense and help support them as much as possible as for the likes of guerra he's set to cut passing lanes just like with um the likes of gulimon of course having a balanced attack every now and then we do see guerra getting forward you know having a decent attacking outlet for such a young player um this season but the major difference is he's also going to be a deep line playmaker allowing him to him and Popuelu to get on the ball as as quick as possible and spray those longer you know balls in behind to try and support the the offensive line the forwards getting in behind and trying to exploit the opposition so there you have it guys that is how i would replicate and recreate Ruben Barrage's Valencia tactics, of course. If you have enjoyed this video, as per always, hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you would rank the system out of 10. Personally, for me, I really like it. Um, I, I, I told you guys the other day, if, you, if you've been watching all my videos, I told you guys the other day, I really do like the kick and rush approach. It's, it's slowly creeping up there as one of my favorite um, career mode tactical visions to use. So out of 10, if I have to think really hard about it, I would give this a solid 8. I think the current system, it plays into the, the positive side of what the, the team and the players have to offer. It plays to the strengths of them. It gets the best out of these younger players. So yeah, I would say a solid 8 best suits and reflects a very positive system. Um, you guys can let me know down below what you would rank the system out of 10. And of course, until the next time, I hope you have a damn great day. I'm out.